Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about a concept in number theory called perfect numbers. A natural number is said to be perfect if it's equal to the sum of its proper divisors. Proper divisors means divisors that are not the number itself. So, for example, 6 is considered perfect because the proper divisors of the number 6, the numbers that divide evenly into 6, are 1, 2, and 3. We're not including 6 itself. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is also equal to 6. On the other hand, 8 is not perfect. The divisors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. The proper divisors are 1, 2, and 4. And these do not add up to 8. So for example, you might be asked to show that a number is a perfect number by finding the sum of its proper divisors. In this example, we're going to show that 28 is in fact a perfect number. So first we go and we find the proper divisors of 28. 1 divides evenly into 28, as do 2, 4, 7, and 14. If we find the sum of these numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14, it turns out to be 28. So 28 is considered a perfect number. An interesting fact about perfect numbers is that many of them take on the form 2 to the power of n minus 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus 1. In fact, when 2 to the power of n minus 1 is prime, the product is a perfect number every time. Let's take a look at a few examples. So here we have a table and we have the values of n being 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're going to look at each one of these values and we're going to plug them into 2 to the n and subtract 1 and see if we get a prime. If we do, then we're going to find 2 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 and that is guaranteed to be a perfect number. So we'll go ahead and add up all of the proper divisors and prove that it is. So let's start with 2 being our number n. So we would have 2 squared minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. That is a prime number. Now whenever this is prime, we know that the next number we calculate in the next column over is going to be perfect. Let's see what that turns out to be. So we have 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1, which we already know turns out to be 3. So that's going to be 2 to the first times 3, or 6. That means that 6 must be a perfect number. Now we already saw in the previous slides that it is, but just to confirm, the numbers that go evenly into 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6, but we're not going to include the number itself. So we add up 1 plus 2 plus 3, and we get 6, and that proves that it is, in fact, a perfect number. Let's try another one. Plugging 3 in to 2 to the third quantity minus 1, we're going to have 8 minus 1, which is 7, which is a prime number. So that means that if we plug it into this bigger formula, plugging in n equals 3, we should get a perfect number. Let's see, we get 2 to the power of 3 minus 1 times, now 2 to the n minus 1 we already figured out is 7. I like to put a little cross across my 7 there. So that's going to be 2 squared, or 4, times 7, which is 28. Is 28 a perfect number? Well, we already saw that it is because its factors are 1 and 2 and 4 and 7 and 14 and 28, but we don't include the number itself. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 7 is 14, plus 14 is 28. So this is, in fact, a perfect number. Let's try when n is 4. So we get 2 to the 4th minus 1 is going to be 16 minus 1, which is 15. This is not a prime number, so this rule doesn't apply. Let's try n equals 5, though. 
If n is 5, we have 2 to the 5th minus 1, which is 32 minus 1, or 31. And that is a prime number. So let's see what perfect number it generates. That's going to give us 2 to the 5 minus 1 times, we already found 2 to the 5th minus 1 is 31. 2 to the 4th then is 16 times 31 which is 496. Now we look at the divisors. 1 and 2 both go into 496. Does 3 divide evenly? No, but 4 does. 5 doesn't go into 496, and neither does 6. 7 doesn't go in evenly either, but 8 does. 8 goes in 62 times. Plus, 9 and 10 don't go in evenly. In fact, the next number that goes evenly into 496 is the number 16. Now each one of these factors I've listed so far has a buddy. 496 goes with 1, although we're not going to include that in our sum. 2 times 248 is 496, so that's another buddy that goes with 2. 4 times 124 is 496, 8 times 62 is 496, and 16 times 31 is 496. And you can confirm that these are the only factors of 496, and when we add them up we get 496. So 496 is also a perfect number as we expected. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.